Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to another Hobby Hour tutorial. Let's speed paint this Tyranid Broodlord in a frosty, icy color scheme. Tyranid armies have a ton of models, and this model is a test for a potential army. I wanted to come up with a color scheme that was fast and easy to achieve, but also looks good on the tabletop. So let's get painting. I began by priming the model using my favorite method. Rather than beginning with black, I prefer to start with a medium gray primer all over the model followed by a white spray from the top and sides. The result is a much lighter and more subtle zenithal style effect, with white on the top of the model blending to gray on the underside. Alternatively, you could undercoat the model with gray sear or white spray and get great results too. There's only one mix in this guide, so let's get it out of the way first. I mixed about three parts apothecary white to one part aethermatic blue, just enough blue to tint the white slightly. Then I painted this mix over the entire model, working one section at a time. Using contrast paint correctly is all about control, controlling where the paint pools and where it doesn't. Usually I start by flooding the area with paint and work the paint into all the cracks. Then I'll wipe the brush on a paper towel and soak up excess paint on the model. Allowing some paint to pool will create deeper color, but we can just as easily wipe paint away to create highlights. After allowing the model to dry, I repeated the whole process with Tyran Blue Shade Paint. Tyran? Tyran? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but if you do, please drop a comment to let me know. Shade and wash paints tend to have more of a dispersion agent in the formula, so they'll tend to flow off the raised edges and into the cracks more than a contrast paint. However, it's still a good idea to control how much paint is on the model. Make sure there isn't too much wash darkening the raised edges and flat surfaces and make sure it doesn't pool too much in the cracks. I want the scales to have an ice, glacier type look to them, and I want to bring in some vibrant blue tones. Talisar Blue has the right hue, but it's a really strong color. Rather than allowing the paint to pool, I'm painting this layer as evenly as possible. Think of it more like a layer of transparent glass, or a filter, which is tinting the layers underneath. I decided to blend some areas, like the spikes on his arms, and it's really easy to do. Apply a small amount of paint about halfway down the spikes, rinse the brush, wipe it on a paper towel, and then use the damp brush to blend to the edge. Next I painted some Drakenhof Nightshade in a few of the deepest recesses, between the scales on this big spike and under the carapace. I also used a small amount to shade the base of the claws. I blended out the edge, just like with the blue. Apply a small amount of paint, rinse and dry the brush, and then soften the edge. I wanted to pick an accent color for the joints and crack details, and decided on Luxie on purple. It's different from all the blues, but still fits in with the cold palette. Some of these areas can be kind of tricky to paint, 
so make sure to use a very fine brush and try your best. But if you make any mistakes, that's okay. It'll be easy to fix them later. Now it's time to highlight the scales. I want to make them look like ice, which will involve some transparent highlights. And I'm going to start out with Fenrisian Gray. Using an old brush, thin down the gray with water, gather a small amount of paint on it, and drag the brush on your palette. Turn it over and drag again, and the brush will form into a chisel type shape. Lightly paint in a bunch of different directions on the scales. The more, the better. The key here is to have a very small amount of paint on the brush. Since the paint has been thinned with water, it's likely to run if the brush is too overloaded. A good rule of thumb to remember is the thinner the paint, the less you want on your brush. Fenrisian Gray is also a really close match for the skin, so I used it to touch up any mistakes. I painted a quick highlight with Jean Steel or Purple. You can mix some white into the purple for another highlight if you feel like it. It does take a little time, and if I had 100 models on my desk, I'd probably skip the highlights. For the final highlight on the scales, I'm using some heavily thinned white paint. Just like with the Fenrisian Gray highlights, I want these highlights to be very transparent. Remember, when the paint is really thin, you want barely any on the brush. You can vary the paint to water ratio and make marks of varying degrees of transparency. I painted the scratches in different directions, in a variety of widths and amounts of transparency, and I painted the brightest white highlights near the edges. With all those white highlights applied, the last step is to paint the eyes. The eye sockets weren't quite dark enough, so I painted a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade and allowed it to dry. Then I added a couple dots with Dorn Yellow. I applied generous amounts of textured paint to the base using an old brush. Before the paint dried, I sprinkled on some coarse gravel and fine sand. After the textured paint dried, I painted the base with rhinoxide, followed by a dry brush of Steel Legion Drab. I base coated the rocks with Dawnstone followed by a wash of Agrax Earth Shade. I painted the rim of the base with black, and then applied patches of dead static grass with superglue. For the snow, I made a paste with Woodland Scenic Snow Flock and white glue. I applied the paste in patches using a sculpting tool. While they were still wet, I dipped the entire base into a container of Snow Flock. This adds a fresh, powdery effect. You could omit this step if you like, and the snow patches will look slushy and melted. And here's the finished Broodlord in a frosty, winter color scheme. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. 
I think it might look better if I highlight the skin up to white and possibly add a darker accent color somewhere. What do you think? Would you paint your army differently or do you like this color scheme as is? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy painting.